The tones in Thai are actually quite straightforward. The tones are the same as the intonations we have in English for asking questions or expressing emotions. The main difference, of course, is that when you use a different tone in Thai, it actually changes the meaning of a word. And in fact, there are many times in conversation when you don't actually use a tone and you can usually infer the meaning of the word from the context. We will deal with the tones in passing throughout the course so that eventually it becomes second nature. In the rapid method, there are really only three groups of tones. The first group over here are these two question tones. The first tone is what I call a full question. Why? How? So if you have a word with a question tone in Thai, then all you have to do is mimic that sound. So say, for instance, the word two, which is song. Why? How? Song? It's the same intonation. Now, in English, we do something a little curious when we're not sure about the answer or we feel a bit skeptical. We say something like, really? What? So, in fact, a temple in Thai is the word what? You'd say it exactly the same way as what? Is that really a what? Similarly, for the word shop in Thai, which is ran, is that a ran? It's a tone we use when we're skeptical or we're feeling unsure. Now the next tone feels a little bit embarrassing for us because you have to express a lot of emotion. You have to feel really excited. Yeah! Wow! So the word for rice, for instance, is cow. Yeah! Wow! And the word for no or not is my. And you'll often hear Thais saying cannot, my die. The word die also has an exciting tone. And very often the words are run together to make a single tone. My die. And the final tone is what I call a low, sad tone. You have to feel really relaxed and a little bit sad and depressed to make the sound correctly. So it's a little bit like saying, uh-oh, or if you're chanting, um. So for instance, the number four in Thai is C. But if I said the same word with a question tone, C, can you see? then that actually changes the meaning of the word to color. So the way to say four colors, for instance, would be to change the tone in each case. C, C. There's actually another tone in Thai, but I call that the no tone. It's simply when you speak in a deadpan or monotonous voice. So for instance, the word for drug or medicine in Thai is simply ya. Notice that these tones over here tend to be very level or flat, while these two tones here, the questioning tones and the exciting tones, have a bit more of an energetic sound to them. The way to speak Thai with the correct tones is a kind of emotional roller coaster. You have to think of the tone that you want for each word, or in fact syllable, and then get into the right state or the right emotion to be able to make the sound correctly using the same tones or intonations that we have in English. So how do we work out the tone for any particular word? Well, there are only six scenarios, and you have to go through each syllable in turn and work out which scenario it fits into. I kind of use the term word or syllable interchangeably because most Thai words are actually one-syllable words. The words that are more than one syllable tend to be derived from foreign words anyway. And even though there are six scenarios, you only have to worry about four of them. The other two are so straightforward that we don't really have to worry about them. Basically, what you have to do is look at a word or syllable and decide which scenario it fits into. If the syllable has no tone mark, then you decide whether it's singing or dead. And if it has a tone mark, then you consider the scenario for each one of the tone marks. So let's have a look at the situation where there are no tone marks. The first scenario is when the syllable sings in some way. And what I mean by a word or syllable that sings is if you can continue or sing or hum the sound in some way. And for this, you must look at the final sound. So in English, the word sing is a singing word because you can continue the final sound. Same thing for words like run or hum or fa. Now you have to look at the sex of the word. And in Thai, this is determined by the first consonant. So here we have the word pom, which starts with a girl consonant. The word underneath that is con. 
because it starts with a ladyboy. Now in this scene we have a beautiful concert and the girls get all very emotional about it. Why? Well the answer is that girls are far more hormonal than boys are. As for boys and ladyboys, who are technically male after all, aren't particularly moved by the music and actually they feel quite bored. What they really want to do is watch the game on TV. So let's see how this works with Thai words. All of these words are singing words and here we have a girl because of the girl push and the word is pom with a questioning tone and that means I for a man or the hair on your head. Remember if there's no vowel it's the invisible o vowel. This next word starts with the girl s with a question tone son and that means to be interested. The following word is the girl h with the a vowel and with a question tone it becomes ha and this is the number five. Now this word we have the ladyboy 96 nail boots but it's been changed sex to a girl. Another way of thinking of it is that the girl is the first consonant in the word. So the whole word is female. We have the R vowel attached to the 96 nail boots and it ends in the N again. So we say this with a questioning tone. Nan and that means a worm. We have the same thing here where the waving ladyboy has been changed to a girl. So the whole word is a girl followed by the a vowel ending in the nail boots. So with a question tone it becomes one and that's the word for our sweet. Now these words down here are either boys or ladyboys. The first one is a ladyboy. It's got no vowel so it's the o vowel and the word is con with no tone and that just means a person. The next word is also a ladyboy. Lom, also no tone, and that means wind, or the air that you put into a tire. The next one is the U-boat captain chewing his tobacco, so the word is a boy, and it's John, which either means to be poor or until something, depending on how you use it in a sentence. The next word is a ladyboy, because the consonant is a yakking ladyboy, and with the A vowel you say ya and this means drug or medicine. Now the final word has got the two consonants fused together to make the pl sound. You've got the spy balloon, which is a boy, followed by the squirrel. And it doesn't really matter what the sex of the second consonant is because it's the first consonant that matters. Followed by the a ah vowel is the word bla, which means fish. So that's a situation when we have a singing syllable. It's quite different when the sound gets cut off or killed off usually by a consonant at the end that cuts off the sound or a very short vowel. So the scenario is when everybody goes to the disco and dies of an overdose. Girls and boys who are not really used to taking drugs, they die instantly so it's a sad tone. But fat lady boys, and what I mean by fat is if the sound is a big fat long sound they take a long time to die and they die very noisily and melodramatically. Ah! And here we have a thin ladyboy and that means a short sound. The thin ladyboy turns into a ghost and he's taken by surprise. What? So it's an uncertain tone. Now whether the sound is a long or short sound only matters for ladyboys. You don't have to worry about whether the sound is fat, thin or long or short if it's a girl or a boy. A girl or a boy is always sad but a fat ladyboy with a long sound is an exciting tone while a thin ladyboy with a short sound is uncertain. So let's see how that works in practice. All of these words are dead words and the first word starts with the ladyboy carrying a cactus with the invisible o oh vowel. So because it's a ladyboy we have to decide whether it's thin or fat. Well o oh is a short sound so it's a thin ladyboy. Cop and that means to date someone. The next one is also the ladyboy carrying the cactus followed by the short a ah vowel. So because it's short it's the thin ladyboy who dies in surprise and so the sound is ka and this is what a girl will say at the end of a sentence to be polite when asking a question. This word over here is the 96 nail boots followed by the ah vowel and that's a long fat sound. So here we have a more melodramatic tone. Na and that means outside. Same thing over here. The vowel on top here is a long uh sound. 
So that makes this word a fat ladyboy, and the tone is mud, and that means dark. This word here starts with the U-boat captain, so it's a boy, in which case it doesn't matter whether the sound is long or short, it's a sad sound. It's followed by the R vowel and ends in the chicken, bar, and that means to say. Here we have the captain chewing tobacco and ending in the short a, uh, and it doesn't matter that it's short, it's still a sad sound, ja, and that means to do something in the future. This is one of the girl S's, so the word is female, so the tone is sad. You have the invisible O oh vowel, and together it makes a sound sot, which means fresh. Same thing here, we have the humpback lady with her baby, the H, ending in the chicken, and the invisible O oh with the sad tone hock, and that's the number six. Now here we have a sex change. It was the yakking ladyboy, but we've changed the sex to a boy, this is a silent sex change, Doctor. You can see it's the first consonant in this word, so the whole word is a boy, which makes the tone sad. Ya, yeah. and that means to want to do something. But if I didn't change the sex, I would have a ladyboy word with a long ah vowel. That's a fat word, and the tone becomes ya, yeah, which means difficult or hard. Here we have another word where the sex has been changed by the lady sex change, Doctor. So the meditating ladyboy is now a girl, which makes the tone sad. You've got the invisible O oh vowel, so together it mot, which means something is used up. But if I didn't have the sex change, then the word is a ladyboy, and it's a short O oh vowel, which makes it the thin ladyboy, who turns into a ghost who dies in surprise. Mot? What? Mot? And that means an ant. If I say it with a sad tone, mot. That means or used up. But if I say it with the uncertain tone, mot, then it becomes ant. Same with this word. Because it's a boy, it's a sad tone. Ya, I want to do something. But if it's a lady boy, it's ya, which means difficult. Pasa Thai, my ya. That means Thai language is not difficult. Right, what I've explained to you is basically the rules of the road. But when you use one of these tone symbols on top of the consonant, it's like traffic signs or a traffic cop that overrules the normal rules of the road. So the first tone mark is what I call a dagger. It looks a little bit like a dagger or a knife. Now, this is actually very similar to the scenario where everybody dies of a drug overdose. The only difference is that it doesn't matter if the lady boys are fat or thin. They still die in a melodramatic, exciting, emphatic way. Boys and girls die instantly, as before, so the tone is sad. Let's check out some words. Here we have the rolling ladyboy with a dagger on top, so it ends in the meditating ladyboy with the invisible O, oh, so the word is rom, and that means an umbrella or anything that provides shade or a shadow. This word is also a ladyboy, the 96 nail boots, with the R vowel and ending in the diving ladyboy. With a dagger, it makes the tone exciting. Nong! And that's the calf of your leg. It's also the word used to refer to a chicken drumstick, which is obviously the chicken's calf. Same thing over here. We have the yakking ladyboy with the dagger on top and the R vowel and the meditating ladyboy. So together it makes a sound yom and it means lightly. If I were to leave out the dagger tone mark, then we just have the singing sound, and because it's a ladyboy, there's no tone. Yom. And that means to agree to do something, usually slightly reluctantly. But with a tone mark, it's yom, and that has a different meaning. This word over here is a girl, because you have one of the lady S's and with a dagger, makes it sad. It has the invisible O oh vowel, so the word is song, and that means to send something or to take somebody somewhere. Same over here, we have the girl H with the invisible O oh ending in the meditating ladyboy, and the dagger makes it sad. Hom, and that means to cover or wrap something. Here we have the girl push 
with the R vowel ending in the 96 nail boots, and the dagger makes it a sad tone. Pawn, and that means to pay something off in installments or to hire purchase. This word has the same pattern. It's a boy because of the chicken, and the dagger makes it sad. Gone, which means before. Here you have the Indian fakir with the tired stomach, the t sound, followed by the R vowel. That's a boy, and the dagger makes it sad. Tho. And that means to connect with somebody, to call somebody, or something that comes up next. And it can also be used to mean to haggle. The final word is the captain chewing with the A vowel, followed by the yakking ladyboy. And because it's a dagger, it's a sad sound. Jai. And that means to pay something. Now this tone looks a little bit like a figure surfing on a surfboard down a wave. That's why I call it the surfer or surfing tone mark. And it's kind of the inverse of the dagger. When boys and girls surf, they surf down the wave and they scream in excitement. Yeah! Wow! But lady boys, being somewhat clumsy creatures, the wave throws them up in the air, they lose their balance and they go whoops in an uncertain tone. So let's start off with a girl word. Here we have the girl S with the surf mark on top. There's no vowel, so it's the invisible O followed by the meditating ladyboy. And the word is an exciting SOM, which means an orange or anything that's acidic. Here's another girl, the girl push with the A vowel and the dagger makes it exciting. PA, and that's cloth or some kind of clothing. Here we have the girl H with the A vowel ending in the diving ladyboy and the surf mark makes it HONG, which is a room. Here we've got the sagging stomach of the Indian fakir, so it's a boy, with the invisible O and the meditating ladyboy and the surf mark makes it TOM and that means to boil something for a long time, as in TOM YAM KONG, which is the famous Thai spicy shrimp soup. Here's the U-boat captain with the A vowel, the surf mark makes it exciting, BA, which means crazy. The male chicken with the A vowel and the diving ladyboy, so the surf mark makes it GONG, and that means to echo or to reverberate which is the kind of sound that a gong makes anyway. Now here we have the ladyboy carrying the cactus with the invisible O oh and the 96 nail boots. Now the surf mark makes it an uncertain tone, con, and that means to search for. This is the same word without the tone mark. Remember we had it over here in the singing words. It's a ladyboy with a boring tone, con. And that just means a person. But if I add the surf mark, it makes it uncertain. Con, which is to look for. Same over here, we have the ladyboy squirrel with the R vowel attached. And the surf mark makes it uncertain. La, and that's a wheel. Finally, we have the 96 nail boots, which is a ladyboy. And the R vowel followed by the diving ladyboy. The surf mark makes it uncertain again. Nong, and that's used to refer to a younger person or somebody of lower status. You'd use this word to call the waiter or waitress. Nong, nong, nong. Now there's two more tone marks and they're used much more rarely than the dagger or the surf mark. This one I call the bow tie, or you could possibly also see it as the opera glasses used by rich people who go to the opera. It's a skeptical tone, and it's irrelevant what the sex of the word is. It's always a skeptical tone. And the way to think of it is snobbish ISO people asking each other, are they really members of the club? Here's a word that you might come across. It starts with the chicken and the R vowel and ends in the chicken again. And the bow tie makes it an uncertain sound. Go, and that's a tap or a faucet. Over here we have the squirrel and the R vowel ending in the ladyboy carrying a cactus. The bow tie makes it uncertain. Lop, 
which is the English word for lock. This little plus symbol is what I call a flag. It's somebody taking a flag up to the top of the mountain. And it's always a question. People climb mountains. Why? Well, because they're there. And it's irrelevant what the sex of the word is. So here, for instance, is the chewing tobacco with the A ah vowel. And the word is ja. And that's used as a term of endearment, a bit like deer. The next one is the spy balloon with the A ah vowel. And so the word is pa. And that just means your pa, your father. But is usually used to refer to some kind of sugar daddy. So to summarize, if there are no tone marks, then first determine whether the word or syllable is a singing sound or is cut off. If it's a singing sound, then girls are question tone. Why? But boys and lady boys have no tone at all. If the sound gets cut off, then boys and girls die straight away. Sad tone. But a fat lady boy is an exciting tone, while a thin lady boy is uncertain. Whoops. As for the tone marks, the dagger tone mark is very similar to the scenario where everybody dies. Boys and girls die instantly, sad tone. But lady boys, regardless of whether they are thin or fat, is always an exciting tone. The surfer tone mark is kind of the opposite. Boys and girls have the exciting tone. Wow. But lady boys are uncertain. Whoops. And the bow tie is always uncertain. What? While the flag is always a question. Why? Well, because.